Did it feel a little awkward then? And I'm actually not talking about the silly dad joke, pastor trying to be hip thing. I'm not. I mean, that, might, that probably felt awkward too. I'm with you. But also, the way that the gospel reading ends today is a little bit awkward. For they, they went away and said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Maybe it's like, really? That's, that's the end? Hang on a minute. There, there must be more to the story. But most scholars would agree that this is where Mark's gospel ends. In fact, in in most study Bibles, when you get to chapter 16, verse 8, there's a period, and then there's an open bracket, and the rest of what's in the gospel reading in in the Mark chapter 16 is in brackets, and it says, hey, some of our oldest manuscripts don't have these words. So we're not sure if, like, it got lost or what happened. But I, I think maybe, maybe, just maybe Mark meant to end it here. But if he did, Why? We, we know that these women would go on to, to share this story. How else does Mark know how it went in order to write it down? So why leave us hanging? Well, perhaps it's just as crazy today. Maybe we would be filled with terror and amazement at the foolish, outrageous, unbelievable good news that someone who was dead has been raised. Or maybe... It's leaving us hanging in this in-between space because if Christ is risen, we have to rethink everything. Everything we thought we knew, we must re-examine. Everything is being made new and the old divisions have fallen away. You see, there's no separation. Not even the separation we thought there was between death and life is as concrete as we thought it was because the tomb is empty. Truly, God shows no partiality, Peter says. It's not just any one group or nation that is chosen by God. It is all peoples and nations that are welcomed in to God's family. There is no one and no thing that will separate us from the love of God. There is no one and no thing which God does not love and reconcile to God's self and to one another. This means even you and me. You at your best and you at your worst. You are reconciled to God. The real you, not the one that you try to kind of hide, you know, the, the, the one, I guess it is, the real you, the one you try to hide when you're trying to fit in to other people. God, God loves the, the real you. You are received and loved and belong in God's way of everlasting life and love. Um, I, my, my son told me the other day, uh, when he grows up, he's going to be pastor of this church and I have to leave. Um, <laughs> but also... He told me something really great the other night. Um, when, when we do bedtime, when I'm tucking my kids in, we, we go through uh, people that love us and people that we love. So we say something like, you know, God loves you, I love you, your mom loves you, your sister loves you, your aunts and uncles, all your family and friends love you, and we love them. And Derek goes, I know who loves me the most. And I was like, uh-oh, here it goes. He's going to say, Mom, and I'm going to be a little bit sad. (laughs) No, no, no. Derek immediately goes, God loves me the most. Because God loves everyone the most. And God loves everyone exactly as they are. This is the wisdom of my four-year-old that I could not help but share with you. This is the good news of Easter, that God loves you. God loves you exactly as you are. God loves you more than anyone or anything. And God brings us into that loving relationship with one another. You see, Christ is risen, and we must rethink everything we thought we knew. Because the mighty Caesar who wields death to maintain control and authority has been thwarted by the lowly, humble carpenter from Nazareth, that healer and rabbi whom death could not contain, no tomb could hold up, but has risen from the grave to live forever. Christ is risen and promise has been fulfilled. The things that Christ said would happen have happened. So too then might we want to believe this young man's repetition of Jesus' promise to be raised and to go on ahead of them. 
You see, we hear the threefold proclamation given to the women about what Christ has done, is doing, and will do. The first proclamation that the women hear and we hear is Jesus has been raised. It has already happened. Resurrection came. Death could not hold him. Human failure has not had the last word. God has the last word, and it is life and love. The second proclamation about what God is doing tells us he is going ahead of you. He's going ahead of you. God's activity is not finished. It continues. God is alive and on the move. The gospel has begun and not ended, and Jesus is blazing a path for us to follow. The third proclamation to us and to these women about the future, there you will see him. This is our hope. This is the hope of the whole church and through the church, all of creation, that we might see the Lord face to face and experience right and whole relationship with God and with one another and with all of creation. So why doesn't Mark tell us how the story keeps going? Why leave us hanging? Maybe it's because... It's foolish and crazy good news that's a little bit terrifying. Maybe because it's scary to have to rethink everything we thought we knew. And maybe, just maybe, it is because the story's not done. Because we are called to go and encounter the risen Christ also. You see, Mark's gospel account in verse 1 starts the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. At the end of the gospel, the beginning is over, but the rest is just beginning. So Mark is leaving us with a question, knowing that you are called to go and meet the risen Christ, will you continue this story? You're part of this ongoing story of revelation of God's love for the whole world. We find ourselves here again on Easter, remembering how the women went to the tomb, knowing Jesus who had healed and taught, and knowing that he had died a horrible death, yet even so they go seeking Jesus who was crucified. We come to church today still seeking the one who has the power to bring wholeness to a broken creation. Still seeking the one who showed a way of abundant life that was found through giving one's own self for the abundant life of others, giving yourself away in humble service. We come with a longing in our hearts for this world-shaping, unconditional, changes everything, free, boundless love of God, which we only find in Christ. So Mark's account leaves us without a final resolution and in doing so he calls us to respond to God's faithfulness in faith to go and meet the risen Christ where he has already gone ahead of us and is waiting for us therefore here and now wherever you are on your journey of faith in this place I invite you to see and notice the risen Christ to know The presence with us in song and in community, in bread and wine, as everyone is invited to this table where there's a place for you and enough for all. Experience the risen Christ in the joy of promise fulfilled in the assurance that love and life win victory over death and the grave in Christ. And then go. Go to Galilee. Go to the places where you've seen Jesus before. Go to places where you've never been before. For it's when we go and follow that path ahead of us that we will encounter Christ who has gone and blazed the trail and is there waiting for us. And as you go, as you continue from this place on that next step of your journey, you will learn to embody resurrection and to recognize it all around you. You'll start to see it in the person who's able to find a way to go on living after the death of a loved one. You'll see and notice resurrection. You'll feel it as the gratitude for what you have lets you escape the desire to constantly get just a little bit more. 
You'll start to hear resurrection in the stories of generosity that provide food for the hungry, a hug for the grieving, a house for the homeless, a job opportunity for the jobless, a transplant for someone in need, and you will embody this resurrection as you go and feed the hungry, as you go befriend the poor and cry out for those who have been silenced, as you mourn with those who have no tears left to shed. You will embody resurrection when you go and embrace the person who has been told they are worthless, when you walk towards the ones that people always seem to avoid. You can go and embody resurrection when you sit with the person no one talks to, when you refuse to participate in systems that make sure a little bit of people have everything and a whole lot of people can't get by today. You will go and embody resurrection when you provide hope even in the midst of suffering. So today we've entered into Mark's story of the resurrection. Mark has shared with us the beginning of the good news, and we're left with a question, a question that the early church sought to answer in the way that they lived. That's what we'll be diving into this Easter season here at Christ Lutheran Church on Sundays as we gather in the Acts of the Apostles. You're left with a question. Will you continue the story? Will you trust that you are part of this unfolding good news? Will you take the next step into the new thing that God is doing? Will we be able to turn our flight instinct into energy to proclaim this foolish, amazing, world-changing good news? The question is, having experienced the suffering and death that seems so continuously to mark our days together, will you go and also choose to embody new life and resurrection, love that cannot be defeated by death? Will you go and participate in the new creation? Because just like the heavens were torn open at Christ's baptism, just like the temple curtain was torn in two when he was on the cross, so too has the tomb been opened and there's no going back. Love is spilling forth. New life is coming. God is on the loose. The risen Christ is working right here and right now. This is the beginning. And like the end in the middle, it's filled with life abundant and everlasting love. This is God's story And it can't be folded up and contained because it is still unfolding. And Jesus is already ahead of us, calling once again, follow me. So follow. Go and walk the path of love that gives of itself for the abundant life of others. Know and take the way of Christ that feeds the hungry, welcomes the stranger, liberates the oppressed and captive. Let us go and walk the path where Jesus has been raised, goes ahead of us, and where we will see him. Let's go ahead and go to Galilee, shall we? Amen and alleluia.